Are you looking to start a business but don't have much cash? Well, I've got good news for you. You can start a business with almost no money up front. There's a myth going around that you need a lot of cash to start a business, but you really don't. So in this training, I want to talk to you about 10 ways that you can start a business with little or no money down. Yes, you heard me right. Now, before we get into the detail, let me introduce myself. My name is Paul. I'm a CFO, I'm an entrepreneur, and I've got over 25 years of experience at helping businesses to grow profitably. In addition to that, I've also run three businesses of my own. So believe me when I say I know what it's like to run your own business. Before we get into the detail, I want to start by asking you a question. Have you started your own business before? And if so, how did you fund it? Please drop me some comments below. I'd love to hear your experience. And particularly if you've got any tips that might help anyone else, we'd love to hear from you. So please do do that. And of course, if you've not done it yet, please subscribe to my channel. I do put new videos out every week and I'd love to be able to share them with you. Okay, so I promised you 10 ways to start a business with little or no money down. So let's make a start. Tip number one, uh, when starting a business, think about how you can leverage your own skills or knowledge. Think about what you have, what kind of uh, skills and knowledge you have and how you could use that to start a business as opposed to uh, paying others for their skills or knowledge or going into an area of business that you know nothing about because that's going to be uh, much more tricky for you. It's going to cost you more money and actually you stand a bigger risk of failure. So think about, uh, they always say stick to what you know, but when it comes to business, that can be really powerful. So that's the first thing. Think about what skills, knowledge, experience you have and how you could turn that into a business because that is usually one of the uh, quickest, easiest and cheapest ways to start a business. The second point I want to talk about is running your new business as a side hustle. Now, a side hustle is quite a popular phrase these days, uh, and you'll see it all over the internet, but it's really, really valid. Instead of uh, giving up your job and just plowing plan, a load of money into a new business, which to be honest, may or may not work, run it on the side Why you still got money coming in, because that way you're minimizing the risk of not having any money to pay the bills if your new business doesn't work and you can use some of those earnings to uh, to run your business. You're willing to pay some things and you can use some of that money uh, to help get your new business off the ground. So it's almost a win-win. The only thing you have to be careful with that is really managing your time, making sure that you don't end up burning the candle at both ends and burning yourself out. It's something you can do, uh, not forever, but it's a very good way of starting a business for the first few months uh, if you really want to reduce your risk and reduce the amount of cash you want to put into it. Now, the third thing uh, I want to talk about is uh, we talked about uh, leveraging your own skills and knowledge, but also think about leveraging what else you have, what kind of assets you have that you can use in your business. I'm thinking for things like, you know, where you live. Can you run your new business from home, for example? Um, what else do you have? Do you have any, any, any kind of stock or materials or whatever? You know, it might be a, a hobby that you've had on the side that you want to turn into a business. Think about what you have. Think also about the contacts you have. People might be able to do you favors, anything like that. Particularly if you do something that you know, think about all those other things, resources that you have at your disposal. And then sometimes you might think about things and think, well, they're not worth anything. Actually to other people, uh, they might be worth an awful lot. So think about that as well. And it also helps you to, to keep those costs as low as possible. Okay, number four now, how to start business with little or no money. Uh, and that is look at what grants or subsidies or even business loans are available in your area. Now, depending on the kind of business you want to set up, the industry it's in, and wherever you happen to be in the world, uh, there's a whole range of grants, subsidies, loans, which are available for startup businesses or entrepreneurs. They normally have quite strict criteria, uh, but you never know what's out there. So it's well worth having a look and seeing if your business plan uh, actually meets any of those criteria, because you might as well start a business with someone else's money than your own. Uh, and actually, if you've not 100% set on your business idea, just finding out what criteria is out there for grants and subsidies might actually help you to uh, you know, come up with an idea or finesse an idea which would be eligible for those grants. So that's something which is really, really powerful. Uh, I've worked with two or three businesses uh, in the UK uh, who've literally grown uh, multi-million pound businesses that started off with, with, with grants. So uh, it's well worth thinking about whether you can uh, uh, be eligible for any of those in your area. 
Okie dokie, so that's number four. Point number five. Now for any new business, you're gonna have to uh, buy services and, and, and stuff, right? Particularly if you're trading online or whatever. So what I suggest is always look out for new deals. What are people giving away? What Which, which uh, suppliers are running up free trials of software, for example, or giving you free advertising credit, you know, or whatever it is, there's loads of businesses that offer um, things free to new customers. And actually, if you're smart, you can play off two or three of those and actually start things up and run for a few months paying almost no money. Uh, and once you start looking, you realize there's even more out there than you might have realized. So it's really worthwhile spending a bit of time doing a bit of research and seeing what you can find because you can actually save yourself a whole ton of money. Okay, that's the first five. What's the next five? Well, uh, my sixth point here is one of my, well, it's my favorite point, well, actually my second favorite point, um, and that is um, try not to pay for anything. Now, what do I mean by that? I don't mean don't pay people, uh, I don't mean nick stuff, but what I mean is think about bartering. Now, in some places, that's kind of like a, almost a, you know, a, a dirty word, bartering. Everyone pays for stuff, I can't barter stuff. Well, actually, that's how things were done many, many years ago, and they're still really, really valid now, particularly if you're looking to buy things, goods or services, from other smaller businesses or startup businesses. Think about what you have to offer that might be valuable for other businesses and see if you can trade that in exchange for whatever they are selling. Uh, depending on your kind of business, again, you can save yourself a chunk of money, uh, which is really critical at the start, and actually, you'll find when you start talking to people, particularly with smaller businesses, you'll be surprised how many businesses are open to at least having that conversation. Uh, I know several businesses who've got an awful lot uh, of, of, of services mainly, uh, but not exclusively, so goods as well and supplies uh, by bartering. So think about what you have to offer to other people and what you might be able to trade that for in exchange. Okay, point number seven uh, is all about partnerships now yes you probably want to go into business on your own but that's not the only way to do it think about going into business with other people or potentially with other businesses it could be a joint venture you're thinking about um or you know because if you look to do that way first if you're going to business with someone else all of your costs are halved you actually stand almost you know a double the a double the chance of success because you've got two two parties with two loads of brains thinking about how you can do it, two groups of people or two people, uh, you know, helping the business uh, start. So you need to make sure it's the right person. Don't say you want to kind of, you know, get into to business with just anybody, but business partnerships, particularly if it's partnerships with another business, a bit like the barter point, actually, if it's another business that has complementary skills or resources to what you have to offer, it's a great way to start a, a new venture for very little money. Okay, point number eight, sweat equity. Now, um, this is a, a really, really powerful way uh, to start a business for little or no money. And it's a great way of getting people uh, who have a great deal of experience in business in whatever area you happen to be in, who can help open doors for you and give your business a much better chance of success if you invite them to come and work with you and give them a small percentage of your company or a small percentage of the revenues uh, in exchange for their for them doing something for you, whether it's their expertise, whether it's contacts, whatever it happens to be. Um, it's a really, really uh, 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 great way for new businesses to get some, you know, to really get a leg up from the start. And, and, and I've used it several times myself and many of the businesses I've worked, worked with have used it. One little caveat there, you don't want to give, if you're going to give a, a percentage of your business away in terms of shares, don't give away too much because you may end up regretting it. But certainly it's a great way to start a business for little or no money. Um, other caveat there, you do want to make sure that it's someone that you get on with and you can work with longer term. Because once you give them a little bit of your business, you kind of stuck with them for a little while. A um, couple of caveats there, but this is a really, really great way to, uh, as I say, give your business a leg up from the start. Okay, number nine. Now this is uh, about um, speed of growth really. Now there's a, a real, um, 
I guess, uh, understandable urge when you start your business to get it growing as quickly as you can, because the sooner it grows, the sooner it'll make more money, the sooner you can kind of give up your day job, sooner you can start, you know, earning a load of money. But the reality is, um, if you try to grow your business too quickly, uh, firstly, that's very, very risky, because you're still learning what's gonna work and what's gonna work, not gonna work. And at the start, you know, everything's a learning curve, isn't it? Also to grow quickly is gonna cost you a load of money. If you decide you're gonna put a load of money into marketing or whatever it happens to be, uh, that's gonna, you know, it will grow the business quickly. It may or may not give you a profit straight away and it's gonna really burn a hole in your pocket. So think about starting small and scaling slowly but surely as you try things and prove what works and then doubling down on what's working rather than spending a load of money up front. You'll be surprised how little money you can get away with uh, um, spending at the start. If you if you take that approach of starting small tech to get tests running and working out what's gonna be good for your business to grow and then scaling. Uh, that way is, is, is a, a, I guess, no, actually no matter how much you're looking to invest in your business is, is, is one of the best ways to start. And then point number 10, my favorite point of, of, of all, is get your customers to fund your business for you. Now, this is a killer point, actually. I mean, this sounds crazy. I think, how on earth am I gonna get my customers to fund my business? But it's very, very possible. And the way you do it is you ask them to pay up front for whatever goods or services you're gonna be selling. Now, what you're thinking, who's going to pay up front for something that they've not received yet or they don't know anything about me yet? Well, it's very possible. And I've seen this done several times with, with two or three different businesses, actually. Um, for example, I worked with um, a, a clothing retailer uh, who uh, did a limited collection uh, of new clothing designs. It was uh, women's clothes. Uh, they just did a limited collection of two or three designs every quarter they put out adverts for the design based on you know their kind of mock-ups people paid up front for the clothes then when they had the money in the bank they then went to the factory that they lined up and said here's some money make these for me they knew they'd already sold them it was a no risk no risk model for them because they knew they'd sold the items it cost them no money up front because the customers have paid and it was really a really really exciting business for the customers because they were getting something which was you know unique a limited run um, and they were getting something which is yeah, special. So it does pay to be creative. There's other ways to do that, but you can absolutely get your customers to pay up front or pay before you have to start laying out money yourself. Um, and that can be a very effective way to grow certain kinds of business. So anyway, there we are, um, 10 ways to grow a business or start a business with little or no money down up front. Hope you found this helpful. At least I hope it's got you thinking. It's just, it, it's surprising when you actually sit down and start thinking a bit more creatively, the number of ways you can come up with to actually grow things, uh, grow businesses without spending a fortune. So I hope you found that helpful. Um, as I say, if you've not subscribed yet, please do hit the subscribe button and do drop me some comments below. I would really love to hear your thoughts. And as I say, if you've got some ways to, that you've funded your business that we've not talked about, please do share them because I'm sure we could all learn from them. Finally, before I go, I want to tell you about um, a free guide which I have, which I'd love to be able to send you. If you're looking to uh, earn more, work less, and make sure your business works for you rather than the other way around, I've got a, a seven day business boot camp. It's seven days of business brilliance where we talk about everything from turbocharging and marketing to pricing to promotions to uh, you know managing your cash. It really is everything you need to know to grow your business. So it's absolutely free and you'll find a link for that below if you'd like that free guide. And uh, that's what I've got to say today. Hope you found that useful and I'll look forward to seeing you in the next video.